Hey there, how the heck are ya? Zephyrin here, and we've got something extra special in store for you this week. This is the first of many videos out of a new series that I'm launching called The Bean Building University. These videos are intended for builders both new and old, and by any means, I just wanna start off and say, this isn't really the only way to do things, it's just how I like to do it, things I've learned and picked up along the way, and it's something that I really wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for watching, and let's get on into it. One of the first items that I really wanted to get into is build mode from manage worlds or build mode from lift mode. So what's the main difference? This screen that you can see right here is manage worlds. And if you click on any lot, you can kind of see in the lower right hand corner, the build mode button. And that is what I mean by build from manage worlds. And if you have seasons, one really cool thing about this, and even if you don't have seasons, if it's like a rainy day or something in your game, there's like overcast and it's not quite what you want it to be, then then no matter what, your game is gonna be completely sunny, it's gonna be daytime, and it's going to be summer. So if you have seasons and you're like stuck in the dead of winter and you really wanted to do like a little bit of landscaping or something, go to Manage Worlds and then hit Build Mode from there. And there you go, it'll be summer and it'll be sunny. Now that we've loaded ourselves onto the lot, you wanna go into the upper right-hand corner for Build Mode and then you can click the little tool button there. First things first, we have the grid system and this is toggleable by the letter G if you're on a PC. You will notice that each of the boxes are divided into quadrants. So there's one really cool thing that I learned really recently about the grid system in The Sims 4. Let's grab a bed. These ones are pretty easy to kind of distinguish here because they're pretty long and narrow. You'll notice that as I'm dragging my mouse across the grid that it takes it out by a quarter tile at a time. And if you go on your keyboard and you hit F5, you can drag it even eighth tile placement. You'll notice the difference. Check this out here. This is with it on. And this is with it off. So that's a pretty cool feature. Up next, I really want to go through all of the different features and we'll start right here on the top. So this is the select button. The select button just allows you to click and move anything that's on the map. And then over here next, we have the eyedropper tool, which is E for a hotkey on your keyboard. This allows you to pick any item as is right on the lot swatch and everything. Then we have the design tool. So any particular item that is already laid down, you can hit the R key and then you can click the item and then you can check all of the swatches that are available for that particular item. After that, we have the sledgehammer tool and this one's kind of like a delete tool, but there's also another little feature that comes along with this. I've built ourselves a little house and if you do the sledgehammer tool and you click and drag, it actually kind of deletes everything on that particular layer. So for instance, any items that might be placed or even just straight up like your, your walls or something. So you can just get rid of your walls if you want to. So click and drag on something and then see what it highlights and kind of get used to that. After that, we have undo and redo. So undo and redo on your keyboard are gonna be control Z and control Y respectively. Up next, we have save to my library. So this is a pretty interesting tool. For instance, let me place like a few little trees or random little doodads and whatnot all around on our lot. Let's get a little bit of landscaping too. Beautiful, perfect, absolutely nailed it. One thing that you can do is you can save the entire lot if you click save lot. This will make it so your landscaping and everything on your house, the build as you see it uh, gets uploaded to the gallery. Next, you can distinguish rooms by clicking on a particular room. So if there's like a bedroom that you really like or something kind of like that, you can click on it and it'll highlight it in this white border. Then you can click on save to library and then you can click save room and then you can upload individual rooms. This is actually a really interesting way of how you can upload apartments from city living onto the gallery because, you know, it's not really a lot, but you can kind of cheat the system per se. And we'll get into that a little bit more on the next video, Walls and Rooms. 
After that, we have move lot and house. It's sort of like this little crosshair button at the top. Then you can move house, which as if there's individual buildings, say you have like a little greenhouse off to the side, it'll click on that one building and then you can move that independent of everything else that's on the lot. Then you also have move lot, which moves everything back, landscaping and everything. So if you are kind of building and you decide that you maybe want something shifted to the left or a little to the right or back just a couple of spaces, that's another good way that you can do that as well. Then we have bulldoze. So bulldoze lot will bulldoze 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 lot will bulldoze bulldoze lot will bulldoze the entire building. So everything that you've placed down for build by. So you can see how it acts here. So first I'm gonna do bulldoze terrain because when you do bulldoze lot, there's no going back. You can see that all of the terrain paint and all of the terrain and everything is all gone. We can undo that though. However, if you click bulldoze, bulldoze lot, everything that you've purchased goes down the crapper then essentially. <laughs> and then last but not least on this middle portion, we have the lighting. So lighting on each individual lot is going to vary depending on world, depending on season, if you have seasons and depending on each individual lot itself. There's certain lots that are maybe better for morning. Maybe some are better for like the afternoon. It just really depends on where you are and what you kind of prefer and what you're looking for. This is toggleable by the letter L and this is only in build by mode, by the way, this is not in live mode. So it goes from morning, afternoon, evening and nighttime. You can check everything out that way too. Next, we have moving up and down floors. So there's these two little arrows that are over here on the right hand side of everything. You can use page up and page down if you're a hot key person or if you have those keys on your keyboard. Some keyboards don't like mine. Maneuver yourself this way and you can even go all the way down to your basement floors too. And right after that, we have the walls up view. This is what it looks like when the walls are all the way up. You know, it's just as is. You can see everything in its glory and all of the pieces that you put onto the walls when you're decorating are gonna be there too. Then after that, if you push this button here, it goes down to the walls down view. You can't see anything that'll be on the walls for the most part. There's like certain things you might be able to see, but you, most of your decor is gonna like disappear. You'll be able to see things like tubs, showers, bathtubs, all that stuff. Like the items that your Sims can use are gonna be visible here. Then next, but absolutely not least, there's the wall cutaway view. So this one changes the walls. So whatever walls are the furthest away from your camera are gonna be the ones that are like all the way up and you'll be able to see everything from there. And this is kind of like a crowd favorite for most people. I, for instance, I tend to use the walls up view just because, you know, we like put a lot of work into all that building and everything. I'm just kidding. I don't know. It's just something I kind of prefer and it's kind of what I do. So it's all in your preference, but do with that what you will. And last but not least, I wanted to go through some of the differences between The Sims 3 and The Sims 4 camera. There's some distinct differences. And first, I'm gonna go through The Sims 4 camera. If you really wanted to check this out on the fly and change it on the fly, it's right up here on the upper right-hand corner. It's under camera controls. And let's click on Sims 4 camera. You can right-click to rotate yourself around using left-click. You can kind of drag your camera. You can also use the WASD keys or your arrow keys to kind of maneuver the camera this way too. And then you can also use your mouse wheel to kind of pan around like that. Kind of zip around. It's kind of like a different variety of left clicking. So like the, the clicking the middle mouse wheel and then left clicking are gonna get you kind of the same effect. Some things that you cannot do with the Sims 4 camera. I'm just gonna grab a bed here. You cannot alt rotate or also known as like drag rotating. So I'm holding the alt key on my keyboard and you're noticing I'm doing this and nothing's really happening. Can't really rotate there. That's kind of a, another little difference. One way that you can rotate is by using the period or the comma keys on your keyboard. I don't use this camera, so if there's like another way that you can rotate items on the fly, please let me know. And then you also cannot pan, so meaning you cannot tip your camera on the vertical axes, only the horizontal axes. Let's switch over to the Sims 3 camera. So the Sims 3 camera, you can see that I can pan around and I'm using the middle mouse wheel to do this. The left or the right, the right click will allow you to kind of zip around just like this. You can also use the WASD or the arrow keys to navigate your camera that way too. And I use a combination of like the middle mouse key and WASD. And that's kind of how I maneuver myself when I'm building or or even through gameplay really. Some really neat functionalities of using the Sims 3 camera and that's a really big draw to people who are builders is when you hold the alt key and you click to rotate, you can free rotate items. So 
that's pretty cool. That's pretty nifty. Very helpful if you ask me. Those are some really big items that I really wanted to cover with you. And again, this entire build series is really intended for builders, both new and old. And by any means, it's not intended to be something that is like the only way or like the best way to kind of build, but it's the way that I like to do things and things I've picked up and learned from our Twitch chat, especially, and on just how to be a better builder and how to navigate ourselves in the building world that is The Sims 4. Next week, I have in store everything about walls and rooms, and I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for watching and please sound off in the comments and let me know on some things like what you want to see in future videos because I'm listening and I'm continuously trying to come up with other videos and figure out exactly the kind of stuff that like are really common questions between everyone. Thank you again for watching and as I always say, tomorrow's a beautiful day, especially with you in it and I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.